Hi there. Welcome to Creation Station Weekly. I'm Bob from Creation Station here at Broward County Libraries. And this week, just like all weeks, we start off with a couple of cool tech topics or Creation Station type topics from the week. And then we'll get you something interesting and fun from the library system and get you back on your way. And today, and today we have Rick Johnson from the South Regional Library Creation Station. How are you doing today, Rick? Been really good, Bob. How are you doing? Things have been really fun around Main Library lately. We've had some really interesting news stories popping up uh, during the thing. We've got some projects we've been working on. Um, it's been really interesting to, to try and revive uh, some of our things that have been going on. Um, one of the things I've been working on is the uh, Oculus Rift um, updates. Uh, this kind of leads me to our first story. Let me let me fire up uh, Chrome here and share that for people. Let's see what our first story is here that we got going on. Um, so, Rick, you heard about this one where the FTC sued uh, Facebook for monopolization? Yes. Um, I've heard that, you know, in the past, Facebook always, Facebook and Google have always said that they could just get out of any kind of um, anyone claiming to be a, a, claiming that they're a monopoly by saying it's free and nobody has to use it. So, but it looks like the FTC is going ahead and suing them. Um, yeah, it's going to yeah, be interesting. I think that this is, everybody tries to compare this to the old Microsoft lawsuit um, when they tried to, when they threatened to break up Microsoft. And I think that one of the things here is that um, we have uh, the issue of uh, competition. And you, you can have a legal monopoly in the United States. It's just you have to also have competition. You can't stifle. You can't unfairly squash competition. Sure. Um, and I think that the, the interesting one when I talked about this with a couple of people this week was using Instagram as the as example. Um, it, Salesforce just bought Slack for $27 billion. Uh, Facebook bought Instagram for $1 billion back when. So it's there. Facebook has gone out and bought these small companies and turned them into big companies rather than going out and buying another big company to uh, take them out. So it's going to be a really interesting thing for these guys to try and work out how, if there's real competition or not still going on out there, if, or are they doing these aqua hires where they buy up a company just to hire all their tech staff? Yeah. We're going to see, and obviously, this is nothing that's going to happen this year or maybe even this decade, right? Yeah, but the other thing is, it'll be interesting to see if they do try to break up the company. What, how are they going to break it up along what lines? It's, it's not like it's, it's not like when they broke up AT and T years ago and broke it up into small regional um, telephone companies. Um, there, you know, Instagram is is different enough from Facebook um, that. Uh, you could you could see how this would be different. I mean, you could break take take Instagram out of the equation, but um, it'll be it'll be interesting to see what they if if they get to the point of breaking them up, and um, what the how they how they'll do it, um, you know, how far they'll go. Um, yeah, I, I really don't see how you could untangle that knot fully. I think what I think personally outsider opinion kind of thing is that I think that they're just going to put some kind of huge fine on them and uh, we'll go on. I mean, Facebook's got so many different things from so many different things. Uh, I didn't even bring up the article uh, of in Germany, they're being sued now over the Oculus um, updates. So it's, they're just hammered right and left. You know, if you're a lawyer, I'm sure Facebook's got a job for you right now. Oh. I'm sure they have plenty of lawyers already. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just insane. On a much more fun topic, um, one of the things I found this week was for um, Cruise, which uh, most people have probably never heard of. It's a small little uh, auto company. Um, mm -hmm. GM actually owns, uh, I think it's 85% of the company. And so, yeah, GM's not quite small, I know, but it's as a little division thing. Um, and they are the fifth... Uh, company now to get permission to do full autonomous vehicle testing live without a driver in the vehicle. 
So it, yes. they're just driving, as you can see on the screen here, just just a little you know SUV you know crossover type things. Mm -hmm. um, it's got the the lidar stuff all over on the top of the vehicle still to be tracking and doing all the things. But they're set up for some areas in um, San Francisco right now to go do. Would you get into mm -hmm. one of these there, Rick? I uh, probably. Um, they generally have. Um, they're kind of like a drone in its own ways because, from my understanding, is that um, there's always somebody, in a sense, at the wheel, not physically in the car, but someone who's there in case something goes wrong, remotely. Um, so if, if you're going down a small residential street or in a small neighborhood in San Francisco, it doesn't seem that bad because you're not going to be going that fast. So if something happens, you know, something, they lose control. But but if, if we were on the highway or if we were on 95 here, the turnpike, I don't know. I'd be very, very <laughs> afraid. Actually, it's, and it's weird. Uh, California, Arizona, and Florida are three of the four places that automated vehicles have the right to be able to be on the streets. Can you take a while to guess at who the fourth state is? <sighs> I, I would think New York, but no. it, it's probably going to be like City. something like it's oh, Motor City. Really? Michigan. Well, yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah, yeah they've I mean, actually got a lot of miles put in in Michigan on test tracks and uh, some out in the public. Um, but California and Arizona have the top two places right now. Um, and I mentioned that bit when we started talking about this. It's Auto X, Neuro, Waymo, Waymo, and Zoop. Um, and uh, those are the other four that have driverless permits uh, in California. So there's five different companies now with cars out there actually driving around and trying these things out. So it's taking us a little bit longer to get there than some people thought, but it's getting here faster than our rocket ships and flying cars. Well, I have, we're still waiting for the flying cars, so that I think that's going to be much longer than. I think. Imagine driving in Miami in a flying car. Uh, that's even scarier. I think. <laughs> I mean, as much as it sounds like a great idea, the the problem is that you wouldn't be the only one up there flying, and um, you'd be up there with a bunch of other people flying. So, they probably oh, need all something. sorts. I think what's if they work the kinks out of the driverless cars, like you get an autonomous vehicle, you use that same technology, and you can get a car that's airborne. Um, you make that airborne vehicle that much safer. Um, you know, just rather than just having a human being flying in the air, because yeah. there's so much more dangers when you when you get off the ground. So yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I can't quite a bit. But speaking of off the ground, though, that, that's a nice little segue there, Sir Rick. Um, <laughs> the story that you found out there on this drone, I really like this one here. Well, I'm, I've been a fan of, um, of you know, engineering out there that has biomimicry in it, where you're you're um, basically using things from nature to um, either create designs or, in this case, they're actually using part of nature itself, a moth. Um, the moss antennae to actually smell for chemicals or um, target for chemicals, and this this would seem to if it has the 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 breadth of of, of ability, um, it would seem to have a lot of applications, um, very broad applications. In fact, um, here they just talk about you know you know chemical, but. You know, once you start thinking about that, you start getting into military applications, like trying to sniff out explosives, you know, safety issues. But you also start getting into medical, possibly. Um, so it, it, it may be a drone here, but, um, you know, it, it may also be something where they fly the drone along a gas line um, through residential areas or along a long strip of railroad track that has a gas line next to it and smell for for leaks from the gas line. Um, yeah, that, that was sorry. the thing that, I, that really impressed me there. Like, it might even be able to test, I mean, for maintenance issues, you know, for oil leaks or, I don't know, for methane coming out, you know, as you're tra trying to transport those long pipelines across the country. Those were the two things that really leaked out at me. They were like, hey, well, you know, we actually might be able to actually do maintenance and keep up on, on this kind of stuff faster and easier with uh, something like this. If you can fly it along there remotely and not have to worry about getting out out into all that weather or whatever it is. 
True. It, it's a really cool little story. And I, I like the idea that they actually use part of the physical real moth without having to sacrifice anything else. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting that they they um, use it in such a way that, that they're, they're the integration it's like it's easier for them to take part of the moss and the antenna and, and use that and integrate that somehow into the electronics as opposed to creating the electronics to do the the snipping itself and so it's kind of cool that they've been managed to integrate it and um and if they can they can do this for other things it really does have other applications um whether you know, like I said, whether it's connected to a drone or not, but I mean, you know, they have dogs that can smell cancer, that can smell like glucose levels in diabetes patients, epilep, you know, epilepsy, you know, whether somebody's going to have a seizure, you know, I, I suppose they'd have to figure out what those chemicals are um, that the, the dogs are smelling, but um, it would have quite unique. I mean, you could put this at the doors of a medical center and they could smell and tell whether or not um, you know, this could be invasive, too. But it could tell whether your your glucose is too high. Maybe you need to be checked to see if you're diabetic, you have diabetes or not. Or, yeah. yeah. Um, but um, no, it, it's it's one of those really cool little technologies that you, it, it you get to you that we nowadays just think about. Oh, well, yeah, sure. A drone. Well, no, just 10 years ago, nobody was thinking about having drones this small, being able to fly around and do stuff. And now we're able to have them go out and do all this extra stuff. It's really, really a fun idea out there. I really mm -hmm. like it. Yep. Well, thank you very much for being here today there, Sir Rick. Um, tell us what's going on out of South Regional Library and what are you guys doing around the library out there now? Well, we're, we're just um, actually right now we're just, you know, we've been reopened for a while now and um, we're just getting used to having people come back to the libraries. Um, you know, it's 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 a different different atmosphere. Um, it's slightly you know because there are restrictions in place, but um, it's good to see we have lots of returning customers and and some new ones, and um, it's just enjoyable um, for me to you know be face to face with customers again and be able to help people. Um, you know, which kind of thing is the most important part of my job. So, and you um, guys are out on South Regional, Broward College, South Regional campus. Are the students back in out there now? You no, know, there's very limited students. Most of the, most of Broward College is online. Um, they do have occasionally um, some testing that goes on here um, for practicums, um, or you know, I think it's from um, practical testing with nurses and where things have to be hands-on, that type of thing, um, or with automotive or um, uh, engineering type things. So some gotcha. of it is, some of it, but I think they just do that. Um, they can have, you know, with the, the testing they do, you're only gonna have a couple people there anyway, so it's not, yeah. you're not gonna have a large crowd or anything. So We're all getting back, it's, it's that whole get to better, not the normal, but to get to better, right? Yes. Um, and speaking of better, um, we've got uh, our cool library fact for the day, um, for this week, is RB Digital. Um, you can access this directly from the library website. And we talked earlier about how Facebook, you know, and how integrated they are with everything else. And there's a lot of people who get their news from Facebook and stuff. You don't have to do that. You can just come to the library and read the original article yourself. You can download and get all the magazines, all the information that you need from RB Digital, all with a free digital library card. So you can have access to just about anything that you need to or want to. You want to know about that new M1 chip came out from Apple? You can just go read the article itself right from Apple. You don't have to go find it on Facebook and be bombarded by all those other ads and all those other things. Um, it's a really nice little feature that we have out there for that. Yeah, I've used it many times. Um, I love, I love the. Um, they they have really quite a variety of um, subject matter, on. so it's a good place to get information. You know, on hobbies, everything. Like you said, news. Um, like you're showing right now, cook cooking magazines. It's like it's great. Um, I just tend to default to cooking magazines for my wife. Uh, every time, I, every time I do this at home, I'm, she's like, "Oh wait, let me look at that." I'm like, "Okay, here," and I just hand her over the tablet, and I just have to go off and do my thing. <laughs> well, thank you very much for that, Sir Rick. 
Um, sure. This is another edition of Creation Station Weekly. As always, email us at creationstation at brower.org with your ideas, with your suggestions, or if you want to see your local library featured and get a librarian from your local library up on the screen, let us know in the email. Thank you guys all very much. We'll see you next week.